Martial arts have evolved over centuries, with different regions of the world contributing their own unique styles and philosophies. China, Japan, Korea, and Indonesia are just a few of the countries that have developed martial arts traditions, each emphasizing different techniques and forms of combat. This diversity has naturally led to an intriguing question. What happens when two different martial arts face off against each other in a real fight? In particular, when a kung fu expert goes head to head with a karate master, which style comes out on top? Kung fu, a traditional Chinese martial art, is one of the most ancient and respected fighting systems in the world. Its origins date back thousands of years, with countless styles evolving over time. Whether it's Wing Chun, Tai Chi, or the powerful Shaolin techniques, Kung Fu offers a wide array of methods for both offense and defense. Kung Fu emphasizes fluidity and adaptability, with practitioners often focusing on using an opponent's energy against them, as well as intricate footwork and hand techniques. On the other hand, Karate, which hails from Japan, is a more straightforward and hard-hitting martial art. While it also has a long and rich history, karate emphasizes power, precision, and direct strikes. Its techniques are designed to quickly incapacitate opponents, with an emphasis on strong punches, devastating kicks, and effective blocking. Karate's efficiency has made it one of the most widely practiced martial arts in the world. The question of which is superior, Kung Fu or Karate, has fascinated both practitioners and fans for decades. Various matchups over the years have attempted to settle this debate, pitting masters from both styles against each other in competitive settings, especially in MMA, where different martial arts can truly be tested. One of the most notable examples took place in the early days of the UFC, when Royce Gracie, a Brazilian jiu-jitsu practitioner with karate training, faced Jason DeLucia, the only kung fu fighter in the UFC at the time. In their UFC two quarterfinals match, Gracie used his combination of karate and Brazilian jiu-jitsu to overpower DeLucia. He's got him in this. Uh, this is indicative of the of the earlier match. He tries to roll and him it, over, and his. But usually, if it's pulled over your head. Uh, you can recover from it fairly quickly. What do we see? Despite Kung Fu's emphasis on adaptability and technique, DeLucia had no answer for Gracie's well-rounded fighting style, which culminated in a submission victory via armbar in just over a minute. What do we see? So it's that he had an arm lock to break his arm. He's going to snap his arm. He did, too. Oh. Is that broke? This fight is often cited as an example of the practical effectiveness of karate-based striking when combined with grappling skills. Another high-profile clash between the two martial arts occurred when Xu Xiaodong, a controversial fighter and self-proclaimed martial arts truth seeker, faced off against Chen Yong, a Tai Chi master representing Kung Fu. The fight was held under MMA rules, but it quickly became clear that Shu's karate-like striking abilities, paired with his MMA experience, gave him a significant advantage. Chu delivered powerful kicks and punches that overwhelmed the Tai Chi master within seconds, forcing the referee to call the fight. While this matchup was far from a traditional contest between classic Kung Fu and Karate, it showcased the gap between traditional martial arts and modern competitive fighting techniques. Not all Kung Fu versus Karate matchups end in swift knockouts, though. A viral fight from 2020 saw 69-year-old Tai Chi master Ma Baoguo square off against 49-year-old Wang Qingming, an MMA fighter with a background in karate and kickboxing. Despite his advanced age, Ma stepped into the ring with confidence, but the fight quickly turned into a one-sided affair. Within the first 30 seconds, 
Wang knocked Ma down three times with a series of rapid punches. The referee eventually stopped the fight after Ma was knocked unconscious and medical personnel had to step in. This fight, which became infamous online, further highlighted the limitations of traditional martial arts when faced with more aggressive, direct techniques like those seen in karate and MMA. A more balanced and technical fight occurred in the UFC welterweight division, where karate master Carlos Condit faced Dan Hardy. Hardy, who trained at a Shaolin temple in China, was eager to showcase the skills he had honed in both Kung Fu and traditional Shaolin martial arts. However, in their fight at UFC 120, Condit demonstrated the power and effectiveness of karate. Known for his striking and versatility, Condit knocked Hardy out in the first round. I like how. Whoa! Absolutely oh, right. I like how. Whoa! Absolutely right. Adding yet another victory to karate's record against kung fu in competitive fighting. Condit's win reaffirmed the strength of karate in a practical fighting scenario where precision, power, and well-timed strikes can quickly end about. While these real-life encounters offer insights into the strengths and weaknesses of both martial arts, it's important to remember that fights rarely play out like the dramatic showdowns seen in movies. In Asian cinema, particularly in Chinese martial arts films, Kung Fu is often depicted as almost magical, with fighters capable of incredible, otherworldly feats. They leap across rooftops, perform complex, elegant movements, and deliver lightning-fast strikes that seem impossible. Meanwhile, karate in films is often shown as a martial art of pure power, with practitioners breaking through walls or launching devastating kicks that send opponents flying. In reality, both kung fu and karate are highly effective martial arts, but they differ greatly in their approach. Kung Fu's emphasis on fluidity and circular movements contrasts with karate's more linear, straightforward strikes. This makes for an interesting dynamic when these styles collide in the ring, as the fighters must adapt to one another's strengths and weaknesses. One fascinating example of this dynamic is the fight between Shaolin monk Yi Long and Japanese karate master Yuichiro Nagashima. In the first round, Yi Long, known for his iron will and endurance, managed to trouble Nagashima with a series of precise punches. However, Nagashima fought back with powerful karate strikes, even knocking Yi Long down with a well-placed punch. The fight seesawed between both fighters, with each getting their moments of dominance. In the end, despite Yi Long's valiant effort and dominant moments, the judges declared the fight a draw, leaving fans to debate who truly had the upper hand. Ultimately, while individual matchups between Kung Fu and karate practitioners offer entertaining spectacles, it's hard to definitively say which martial art is superior. Both styles have their own strengths, and the outcome of any fight depends largely on the skill, conditioning, and strategy of the fighters involved. While Kung Fu's fluid movements and adaptability can prove effective in many situations, karate's raw power and direct approach have often given it the edge in competitive settings. As martial arts continue to evolve, we may see new interpretations of these age-old disciplines, further blending traditional techniques with modern combat sports. But one thing is certain, the debate over which style reigns supreme, kung fu or karate, will continue to captivate martial arts fans for years to come.